Okay, now we're going to talk about radical functions. All right, so a little quick review before we get into those, though. All right, so recall this notation. The nth root of a is how you read that. n, the little thing inside the wedge here, that's called the index. All right, it's the root you're taking, square root, cube root, fourth root, whatever the case may be. Uh, a, what's underneath the radical sign here, the a, that's called the radicand. Right, so just make sure we're f familiar with the terminology. And the whole thing is just called a radical. All right, so here's a definition. A to the 1 over n is equal to the nth root of a. Remember that definition from somewhere back? All right, so that's what allows us to say, all right, what's the square root of 7? Everybody's got a square root button on your calculator. If you do the square root of 7, you get 2.64. 2.64. Six four five eight. When you round it, okay. Now, if you do seven raised to the one half power in your calculator, everybody see you're also going to get two point six four five eight, right? So you probably wouldn't go seven to the one half in your calculator because you got the square root button. But if you wanted to say find the ninth root of three hundred and twenty-eight, well. You could do that with the calculator by just going, all right, that's 328 raised to the 1 ninth power, and doing it that way. And that'll give you 1.9035. All right, so everybody remember that definition? And there's one more that was actually uh, bigger, and it encompasses all this stuff. All right, so a to the m over n is equal to, and there were two ways you could write it. You could write it as the nth root of a, all of that raised to the m power. Notice the numerator of the fraction here becomes the exponent, and the denominator is the index of your radical. Uh, or it could be written as the nth root of your radicand raised to that m power. Right? So that was kind of nice. Uh, a couple of examples would be, right? so if you do a to the 2 thirds, that's the same thing as the cube root of 8 squared, right? And the cube root of 8 is 2, 2 squared is 4, right? But remember we also could have written it the other way, just so you can see that it does indeed give you the same value, all right? The cube root of 8 squared, which is the cube root of 64, which again is just 4. I personally, when I'm dealing with numbers, I go with the top one just so I can make uh, my number smaller and then raise them to the exponent, but it makes absolutely no difference. All right, so then what about number two, where you got a negative exponent? Well, it's, we need to write that as with a positive exponent, All right? So everybody remember how we do that? One over four to the three halves. And then that goes to one over the square root of four cubed. And the square root of four is two, and two cubed is eight, so 4 to the negative 3 halves is the same thing as 1 eighth. All right, so everybody remember, remember those definitions from way back when? All right, so now let's move on into the, to the functions. All right, so say we've got these four functions, the square root of x, the cube root of x, the fourth root of x, the fifth root of x. All I want to talk about is the domain. Now, we already know the, um, the domain for these first two because they're two of our basic functions that we've, we've had before. All right, so remember the domain for the square root of x was... 0 to infinity, right? x needed to be greater than or equal to 0. Really what this boils down to is the radicand it needs to be greater than or equal to 0, right? x is greater than or equal to 0. Now for the cube root of x, remember that domain was all real numbers because you can take the cube root of a positive number that gives you a positive number. If you take the cube root of a negative number that gives you a negative number, everything was fine. Remember it was the square root of a negative number which gave you non-real numbers. Remember the square root of negative 4, that's 2i. When we're talking domain of range, we're talking um, uh, real, real numbers and so we want the, uh, the radicand to be positive. Alright, so what about the fourth root? Well, same idea, the fourth root of a negative number ends up being an imaginary number situation. So again, the domain is um, all real numbers greater than or equal to zero. Okay? And the fifth root, same idea as before, you can take the fifth root of a positive number or a negative number and you'll always get a real number back. No big deal. All right, so we kind of see the pattern that's going on here. If the index is even, then your radicand needs to be 
greater than or equal to zero. If the index is odd, well then all real numbers will work. It doesn't matter if you have a positive number or a negative number underneath the radical if your index is odd. All right. Now what this allows us to do is to uh, figure out the domain of more complicated functions. Say like that f of x equals square root of 3x minus 7. All right, so since it's a square root, we want what type of numbers under the radical? You want all numbers greater than or equal to 0. So just take the radicand, 3x minus 7, and we want this expression here, you know what's under the radical, to be greater than or equal to 0. Right? Everybody agree? I mean, we want that to happen. And so then you just solve for x, and you get x is greater than or equal to to 7 thirds. And what that means is if you take any number greater than or equal to 7 thirds, it's okay to use up here in your radical. You'll get a positive number underneath the square root sign. So in other words, any number greater than 7 thirds, greater than or equal to 7 thirds, is the domain for this function. So we would say 7 thirds to infinity would be the domain. See that? All right. What if you had, say, g of x equaled the cube root of 17x plus 3. All right, so the catch here is you, you notice it's a cube root. All right, well, that's cool. Right? If it's a cube root, then we can have positive or negative numbers underneath the radical. And since this is just a linear expression, 17x plus 3, you can plug any number you want in there for x. Nothing bad is ever going to occur. So the domain would be all real numbers. Everybody see that? All right, so that's the quick uh, synopsis for radical functions. Make sure you see the next video on solving radical equations. Study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.